Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an amazing chess miniature played by the 5th Women's World Chess Champion Nona Kaprindashvili. Probably you know that today Kaprindashvili turns 80. She is a legendary chess player who was also the first woman to be awarded the FIDE title Grandmaster. Let's wish her happy birthday and a strong health. The following game which I want to share with you, Kaprindashvili played against German chess player Rudolf Servati. This game was played in 1974 in Dortmund. Kaprindashvili opened up with e4 to which Servati answered with c5. Sicilian defense is on the board. c takes d4, knight takes d4 and g6 black is going for accelerated dragon against which white is setting up the Marozzi bind. Knight f6, knight c3, knight g4. Black is giving up his kingside knight, but in return is opening up the dark squared bishop's diagonal and is winning white central pawn. Of course, all this is a theory seen many times, and then black is strengthening his knight on d4 by playing e5. Knight b5. In a return, white wants to get rid of this active knight as soon as possible. Black castled kingside, bishop e2, queen h4. Well, a good move, but according to Stockfish, queen a5 check is better. If bishop d2, then queen b6, and then a6. Uh, that line could give black better chances, but in the game we see queen h4. Knight takes d4, so white is winning black knight and the e-pawn. But in return, black is also managing to win white's e-pawn, yes. Uh, bishop takes g7, queen takes g2. A mistake by Servati. Uh, recapturing on g7 is better if castling kingside than queen f4. Uh, of course, in this case, white is still maintaining better chances, is better developed, but all in all, this is a better line than the one which we see in our game. In the game, we see this catastrophic queen takes g2 move. Now, probably black was hoping that now white will move away her rook, and only then he will win the bishop on g7 thus gaining an extra pawn, but it was in here that Kaprindashvili unleashed a brutal combination. Uh, you can pause the video and try to find white's next moves. Let me remove the arrows. And by the way, let me tell you that bishop f3 is not good because of this rook e8 check. Uh, that can be catastrophic for white. Instead, uh, Kaprindashvili made a powerful move and and she played queen d4. How do you like this beauty, guys? So white is sacrificing the rook on h1, but in return is protecting the bishop on g7, and now the bishop, together with the queen, will exploit the dark squares around black king. Black accepted the rook sacrifice. By the way, if rook e8, then bishop h8 is winning. So in the game we see queen takes h1 check and king d2. This time Gaprindashvili is sacrificing the second rook, which black also accepted, but the interesting thing is that after queen f6, black resigned. This move is very important in order to fix the pawn on f7. And now the threat is bishop h6, followed by queen g7 checkmate, and there is no escape. Black can prolong his resistance by giving up the queen and then creating a loop for the king but this is not serious it won't give black anything that's why at this point resignation followed just a fantastic combination by Gaprindashvili which I hope that you enjoyed greatly and by the way the interesting thing is that several months later Mikhail Tal used the same idea uh, in a game against Thomas Petz uh, that game I have already covered in my channel so the link I will pin in the comment section. Check that out, please. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.